everyone. I'm Adam Brown, and this is Shell Point Today for Tuesday, February 10th. On today's show, we'll hear from Dining Operations Manager Greg Pindara about the special dining option coming up in the Crystal Dining Room for Valentine's Day. We'll preview an Academy class about animal behavior, and we'll see the video from the gala celebration with the theme, Possible. But first, we want to remind you that the Do You Know Your Neighbor event happens today. It's the second of its kind this year, and we are inviting all who have ever lived, worked, traveled to, or have an interest in Spain. This diverse country is rich in both history and beauty. Come meet your friends and neighbors who have this special place in common. The event takes place at 2.15 in the Social Center on the island. Then tomorrow, there is an outing to The Hut at Peace Tropical Gardens. This group will go out into Old Florida country on their way. The Hut is decorated with Old Florida art and gives diners a sense that they are actually sitting in the Everglades. After lunch, time will be set aside for strolling or relaxing in the gardens. What could be nicer? Lunch selections typically range from $6 to $13. The transportation cost is $7. Court pickups start at 10.15 a.m. on the island, and approximate return time is 2 o'clock p.m. Valentine's Day is coming up, and Greg Pindara has an option for you when it comes to dinner time. Hello everybody, it's Dan Philgreen from Shell Point TV here at the beautiful Crystal Dining Room with Greg Pandera, who is the Dining Operations Manager for Shell Point. And uh, we're coming up on a historic event, something that's never happened before, at least since Mr. Pandera has been in charge. And what is that, Greg? Well, we're going to be open on a Saturday night, and it's a special Saturday night that we're going to be open. It's Valentine's Day. Terrific. And what have you got in store for the folks on Valentine's Day? Well, we will have entertainment and we will have a fantastic buffet to serve. And what is that menu, Greg? Okay, we're gonna start it out with our lobster chowder soup. We're gonna be carving slow roasted beef tenderloin with wild mushrooms. We're gonna have braised pork shanks and chicken a la orange. Sea seafood tortellini, fresh vegetable medley, a chocolate fountain, with a variety of fresh fruit and assorted sweetheart desserts. And the price is $21.95 inclusive. That includes the buffet, your beverage, the gratuity, all in one. That's just $21.95 for the whole shebang, folks. So come on out on Saturday, February 14th, for a Valentine's Day special dinner. Dr. Gerald Langberg has traveled far and wide and on the way has collected an amazing array of photographs. He is going to be leading an academy class on the behavior of animals utilizing many of his images. He sat down with Terry Kolath recently to give us this preview. Hello everyone. I'm here today with Dr. Gerald Langberg of Sundial and we're talking about his latest expedition and the photos he's going to share with us in Coffee with a Neighbor. Thanks for joining me, Gerald. Well, thank you for having me. I have to admit it, my ego really gets pleasured every time I do this. <laughs> and well, it should, because you're a very, very, very much respected photographer. Thank you. And we're glad you share with us over and over again. In fact, I have a couple of questions for you. I know you're going to be talking with us Wednesday about animal behavior in Africa. But let me first ask, how did you get started, briefly, how did you get started um, with photographs and these sojourns that you take? Well, I, I lived in Seattle, which is a very target-rich environment for killer whales, bald eagles. Mm. I fished in Alaska quite a bit, and it was just natural to have a camera in your hand when you went there. And of course, I was working, so I really couldn't take that much time. But when I emigrated, if you will, to South Florida, I saw what was going on here. I got very serious about taking pictures of birds and scenery and what have you. So that's how it started. And then you started going on these wonderful um, excursions, National Geographic Explorer excursions and other things all over the world. Friends of Phyllis and mine invited us to go with them to Galapagos about 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, I was so enamored with what I saw in Galapagos, I just never stopped traveling after that. And um, I've been to uh, Galapagos once again with all my grandchildren. And I've been to Antarctica, uh, I don't know, at least three times. And the Arctic, Norway, Svalbard. Um, and you've developed some wonderful classes. Now this time, when you're talking about animal behavior in Africa, you are going to take us to Botswana, Zimbabwe, Zambia, South Africa, Swaziland, Tanzania. And, in the, and Namibia. And Namibia. Wonderful. So all of these places, you have been taking photos of animals. That is correct. Fabulous photos. And, well, thank you. Uh, what's interesting, the animals are pretty much the same in that whole part of Africa, but they're different. Their habitats are different. Mm -hmm. And they catch their food somewhat differently in different areas. Isn't that wonderful? And, um, and you've noticed that, and you can show us the different yeah, animals. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite amazing. Um, some, some, some of the, um, for instance, the fish eagles, as many times as I've been to Tanzania, I never had pictures of fish eagles fishing. And when I was in Botswana, we stayed on a riverboat for about 10 days. And behind the riverboat, and the riverboat, you know, had about 12 people on it. It's like a private party barge is really what it was. Mm -hmm. But it went all up and down the Chobe River. And every night, they would travel in the dark and go to a different spot and anchor. And they had two skiffs behind the boat, which would, would, would handle about 12 people. Mm. And uh, they would take us out uh, on the river, and they had habituated the fish eagles, which was amazing. And what they do, they would have some fish in the cooler in the boat. And these guides actually knew where these fish eagles were. And as the boat pulled up, you noticed that the fish eagle would go up on top of the tree and look straight at the boat, and I was wondering what's going to happen here. And then I saw exactly, once the guide went into the cooler, picked up a fish, he waved it like that, and that, that fish eagle in the branch just came to attention, just like he would salute <laughs> a superior officer. And then he would throw the fish out, and I have sequences of this, where the fish eagle came to attention, wings out, leaped off the branch, circled the boat, they'd come in just like an airplane would come to uh, an airport to land. They don't just come straight at it. Right. They peruse the perimeter, make sure there's no prey that'll eat them. Uh -huh. Came in and then I had all these stop action sequences, the fish, fish eagle grabbing the fish. And I always wondered how National Geographic got these pictures and now I think I know. There is some setup, there's no doubt about it. You just don't happen onto a riverbank or a lake and get those shots. Uh -huh. And I, I, I can recall even watching uh, on National Geographic Wild a couple of years ago, they had kingfishers. And I couldn't understand how a small bird like that, eight, nine inches, they could capture coming in to pick up a fish underwater and, and then come out of the water and fly away. And it dawned on me when they explained it later that they actually had underwater cameras set up and they had been training or habituating those birds for several weeks Amazing. that the birds knew they were going to get food. And, and when the, the, the people stayed in a blind taking the pictures, so a blind meaning like a, mm -hmm. a camouflage tent. But when those people showed up, those birds would come around, they'd get all their equipment ready, and the kingfisher would hit the water and they'd have movies. From the time the bird flew around, kingfisher went in the water, then the underwater cameras would pick it up, and then the kingfisher getting the fish and then coming back up out of the water. Gotcha. Well, I can't afford that kind of equipment. I'm not National Geo, darn. <laughs> You're close, though. <laughs> no. Thank and, you for the compliment. And I know that you um, are explaining the habituated um, creatures, but you do get an awful lot of wonderful, just happen upon it, nature, too, that we're going to see. Well, I, I would say that it, it, it's much better to be lucky than good. I mean, really, I, I think that's something that 
any honest photographer will tell you. Yes. Well, this is going to be pretty special, too, because not only are we going to have your history of all these African jaunts, but you also took the grandchildren again, as you did to the Galapagos. You took them with you back to Tanzania. Right. And you're going to bring a special piece of footage. Correct. Um, one of the things that happened last year when I took all the grandkids to Tanzania was the fathers of all those kids bought all the children cameras, and I, they must have whispered, outdo your grandpa. <laughs> so anyway, I had competition for the best seats in the safari vehicle. They were all over taking pictures. Yeah, and one granddaughter in particular, Chloe, I don't know, she just warmed right to it, and she, she had the eye. And she really got some great pictures. Wonderful. And I think probably the most important thing was uh, I had my little portable movie camera with me, pocketable movie camera, and I said, Chloe, tell us what you think about a safari. Mm -hmm. And Chloe, you should probably never give an opportunity to speak, because <laughs> like her grandfather, she will monopolize the stage <laughs> and never be quiet again. <laughs> and she told you. Yeah, and she told, and it, it was just precious. Right. And her daddy is a very accomplished musician and composed a complete symphony, if you will, to match the pictures that Chloe took on this trip. And when they amalgamated the the uh, music and the and 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 the and the photos, it was just like it was just fabulous. I couldn't believe it. So he has it on a on a uh, a Blu-ray. I'm going to have to get uh, our technical people here to see if they can't get the Blu-ray machine working. Wonderful. And then this will be part of your presentation. Yes. So we'll see everything in the animal behavior in Africa through Dr. Gerald Langberg's eyes, but then also through Chloe's eyes. Yes. It'll be wonderful. It should be interesting. Well, thank you um, once again. And I know we've already started a little bit of talk on what you might bring to us in the future, but we won't give it, any of it away. People will have to come and hear it at your talk. Fine with me. Don't forget to join us, Coffee with the Neighbor. If you don't have a ticket, you're welcome to come anyway if you have the time to see if we have some empty spots. We'd be happy to share them with you. We don't want anybody to have to miss Animal Behavior in Africa with Dr. Gerald Langberg. Yesterday, we got a recap of the annual gala celebration that recently happened in the Village Church. The rest of this week, we'll be sharing parts of that program with you on our show. Today, we're going to take a look at the theme video that was shown. It's all about what is possible at Shell Point. Living at Shell Point has made it possible for us to have less stress. Cultural possibilities that we never would have done if we had stayed at where we were. Enjoying the sun, the nice weather in the winter time, like now. <laughs> Shell Point has all kinds of activities, anything I could think of, and especially the small boats, because I love that. Shell Point has made it possible that I do regular exercise. Uh, we have classes, and they're just marvelous. Shell Point, there's no end to classes and lessons you can take, and obviously uh, model trains is my number one hobby. Frankly, it's an educational experience my age, I didn't think that had happened, but things like this make, make life really exciting. What Shell Point has made possible for me is new friendships and lots of activities to stimulate my mind and to improve my body. I'm a regular at the health club, for example, and I participate in about six groups on a regular basis around the island and beyond. Living at Shell Point has made possible to have fun times with friends, playing mahjong and other games. Well, it's given me a wonderful life here. I have dear friends, some of them are sitting real close, and we're playing Rummy Cube, and I hated to leave Philadelphia, but it was the right thing to do, because everything's perfect here. Hey, I'm still alive and functioning, and I can't wait to get in that pool for the first time today. Living in Shell Point is a very relaxed atmosphere, and I get to play some pretty good tennis with some pretty good guys. Well, we're out here playing golf today, and it makes possible a lot of things, really. No stress. Living at Shell Point has made my life almost worry-free. 
living at Shell Point has made it possible for me to feel safe in an environment where I feel comfortable and happy. Well, it has relieved my worry of how I will be taken care of as well as my wife. Living at Shell Point is wonderful. I don't have to worry about a thing. Everything is taken care of. Mainly the health care is the big thing. A lot of activities that I would not be other do otherwise doing in a regular community. Well, living at Shell Point has made possible for me to investigate art and all of the classes they have here are so interesting and they just make you creative. Working in the library at Shell Point makes it possible to discover your ancestry doing volunteer work, which is very rewarding. When you uh, grow older, you discover that you have two hands. One hand is to help yourself, and the other is to help other people. And being able to teach photography and art at Shell Point accomplishes those two things for me. Shell Point's really been an outstanding opportunity to do things that I've wanted to do and had an opportunity to not be able to do while, during my working career and specifically with my astronomy hobby. It's been a real godsend for us to be able to have that simplicity of life here. The wood shop is a woodworker's paradise. Incredible. And uh, the friendly people here. And of course, uh, newly retired has opened up a whole new world to us of uh, volunteer opportunities and uh, new friends. We'll be sharing more music, videos, and other excerpts from the gala on our other programs this week. Also, you can watch the entire gala on Channel 12 all this week at 10 o'clock a.m. and 2 o'clock p.m. And now let's take a look at today's happenings, Academy News, Menus, and Village Church Connections. Hello and welcome to the happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Caitlin Van Scoy and I'm here with Bev Chanley and we're going to tell you all the exciting activities we have for you today. We start our morning off with a Health Connections class at 715, Bend, Breathe and Balance in the Health Club. At 8 a.m. we have Pickleball at the Pickleball Courts. Also at 8 a.m. we have Round Robins Tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. Volunteers come down to the Stamp Ministry at 8.15. You set your own hours between 8.15 and 11.30. At 8.30, the Ladies Golf Association will be meeting at the Shell Point Golf Club, and 9 or 18 holes will be played. At 9 a.m., bocce will be played at the Woodlands Bocce Courts. And at 9.15, we have open painting in the art studio down in the Island Tunnel. Match play mixed doubles tennis will be played at 9.30 at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. And the Women's Ministries Bible Study will be meeting at 9.30 in the Village Church. 10 a.m. is the time for the Suzy Q to head out to the Woody's Waterfront Restaurant, and you do need to sign up for that. Through the Bible, we'll be meeting at 10.15 in the Osprey Room on the island. And 10.15 is also the time for the Vision Enrichment Group, and they'll be in the Social Center on the island. At 11.45, we have another Health Connections class to round out our morning. It's Living Healthy in the Osprey Room on the island. And here's Bev for our afternoon lineup. Thank you, Caitlin. At 12.30 today, we have Mixed Progressive Bridge. That's played at the game room of the Woodlands. 1.15 is the time the Knitters Group will be in the Osprey Room. 1.15 also finds the Shuffleboard players down at the Shuffleboard Courts on the island. And also, 115 has the rollicking recorderist in the tarpon room. And lastly, the women's ministry prayer group will be in the hospitality room of the village church at 115. We have a health connections class at 1:30. This one is Aqua Pilates Stretch. That's at the Life Quest Aquatic Center. 1:30, the stamp ministry will be working at the Woodlands in the Sable Room. Do you know your neighbor? Spain. That'll be in the social center at 2:15. 2.45, there's a Health Connections class, Balance and Mobility Training Level 2, Session B in the Health Club. It's currently full. 
At 3.15, the Celebration Ringers rehearsal will be at the Village Church. Our last activity for the afternoon is Tai Chi Cha at 4.15. This Health Connections class will be down in the Health Club and it's currently full. Well, we're happy to see you here today and we'll see you right back here again tomorrow. Hi, I'm Terry Kolath with your Academy information for Tuesday. At 9.30, writing your memoirs on the computer continues in the Computer Center at the Woodlands. At 10 o'clock, the History of the Middle East to Present Times, Session 2 will take place in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands. Sign up is required. At 10.15, we have an Apple class, Apple iPad, apps, 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 continuing in the Manatee Room on the island. At 1.15, organize your files and start shredding will take place in the Computer Teaching Center on the island, and sign-up is required. At 1.15, HDTV, Content and Possibilities, with the iPad, will take place on the Manatee Room at the island, and please sign up at either service desk. At 4.30, our Alpha course continues in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands. I'd like to tell you about some new classes coming tomorrow. We have Coffee with the Neighbor number two. This one is Animal Behavior in Africa, with Dr. Gerald Langberg of Sundial. I'd also like to say a word of thanks to our Pavilion Auxiliary Volunteers and to invite anyone to join us. Please see the back page of the Weekly Reminder for all the information you need about current opportunities and sign-up directions. Menus for Tuesday. In the Crystal Room, the Crystal Platter is pork tenderloin with mushroom creamed rice and Brussels sprouts. The dinner special is build your own stir fry for $13.95, and the soup of the day is cream of chicken. In the Allen Cafe for lunch, the special is a turkey, Swiss, and bacon panini with a side salad for $7.25. The dinner special is your choice of a hot dog or a burger with a side salad, watermelon, and ice cream for $8.25. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill are stuffed pork loin for $14.95 or linguine and clams for $15.95. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, I'm Randy Woods, and here it is February, and we are looking forward to another season of praise ministry with Theater for the Thirsty, a presentation entitled My Name is Daniel. Jeremiah and Vanessa Gamble are the actors who make up the drama Theater for the Thirsty, and they will be performing their newest musical entitled My Name is Daniel here at the Village Church on Sunday evening, February 22nd at 6.15. Now, with a lion's den and a fiery furnace, I don't want to confuse you with a TV show called The Survivor. No, this is a new take on the biblical story of Daniel, complete with music adapted from selections that we come to know and love from the movie entitled The Sound of Music. My Name is Daniel is a presentation by Jeremiah and Vanessa Gamble, and they are a married couple of professional actors who make their living on stage and screen. Their home is in the St. Paul, Impressive. Minneapolis area, and they live there with their three children. Together they create music, theater, and laughter. For this performance here at the Village Church, they are joined by actor Nathaniel Norton, who is also a graduate of Bethel University with a degree in theater. Jeremiah and Vanessa Gamble have been involved in professional theater in the Twin Cities, both on camera and on stage for over 12 years. And their passion is creating and performing original works that inspire, entertain, and educate through the ministry of their theater company, Theater for the Thirsty. They're also members of the Gamble family. For those of you from the St. Paul, Minnesota area will know the Gamble family for their 25-year tradition of music and theater in the Twin Cities. Both Jeremiah and Vanessa are graduates of Bethel University, and they have degrees in theater and music. Well, their presentation is entitled, My Name is Daniel. You'll want to get your tickets now to be part of this presentation on Sunday evening, February 22nd at 6.15. Tickets are $10 and available at the church office anytime and can be charged to your resident account. Just call the office at 454-2147. It's going to be a wonderful, inspirational, and evening filled with levity and music 
as we welcome Theater for the Thirsty in this presentation. My name is Daniel. Get your tickets. Be sure to join us. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in tomorrow when we'll have a bit of music from the recent gala celebration, including a song written by our guest artist, Jess for Shell Point. We'll also take a trip back to the 1950s. Well, actually just down Shell Point Boulevard to the Springs to see beautiful antique cars that came to put on a show last week. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Tuesday, February 10th. I'm Adam Brown, and for all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.